Give the Lord a hand. The Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. Welcome to World Harvest class where we teach His Holy Word. And I do trust that you have a syllabus. Otherwise, you're a person with a crutch and you don't go very far. Or with a wooden leg, that'd be better. Uh, you need, you, you need, you need the teaching syllabus in order to get, to get what you need from the Word. So be sure and order one, get one. We are at one of the most amazing supernatural gifts of the Spirit that the devil has used in his evil in our country, there are billions of dollars spent every year trying to know the future. And the church <laughs> spends nothing to know the future. Won't even pray about it, much less do something about it. So I want us at this point in time to turn our total spirit toward a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. In a world that's seeking to know the future so desperately, you would be amazed at the number of, of senators and congressmen and people like that who pay clairvoyants and fortune tellers to tell them something about tomorrow. In politics, there are more witches per inch in Washington, D.C. than any other city in America. It's a lucrative place to shake down some nuts. Are you here or not? Amen. Yeah. You better start thinking when we give the world to the devil, it'll be like Egypt when, when, when uh, Joseph arrived. It'll be like Babylon when, uh, when Daniel arrived. When the saints of God do nothing, the devil works overtime. He does his overtime free. And so we want you to awaken to the potential of the body of Jesus Christ, of which we're all a part of that body. And we can always show you exactly how to get these gifts functioning in our lives personally and in a group collectively, uh, because it's right there in the Word. You just read three chapters, you know. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 14, and study it, and you got it. It's right there. The divine, the divine purpose of ministry and ministry of, of this special gift called the discerning of spirits is to discern the spirit that motivates a person. Now, we have to go slow with this because we don't want to miss this is so important, you know. Yes, the gift, the gift of the Word of Wisdom is, is a, a revelatory gift, and this is a revelatory gift. And the gift of the Word of Wisdom projects the future, tells you, tells you what's going to happen. The gift of the Word of Knowledge tells you what has already happened beyond your, 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 your knowledge of seeing or hearing or touching or feeling or speaking, and, and it's supernaturally revealed to you. Now we come to the super one, I presume you'd say, where we come to know what is inside of a person. Inside of a person. I don't know whether I should tell you this or not, but a few months ago, I was praying and the Lord says, did you know I don't see people like you do? And I said, well, I don't know. He says, I see a person and they got one nose and two eyes and two ears. He says, I don't see that. He said, just like the empires that Daniel saw, they saw gold and I saw a lion. They saw silver and I saw a, and I, and I saw silver, and I, and I saw a bear. So I don't see what you see. I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm gonna show you. And I looked at a, a lovely woman and suddenly her, her skin faded and there was the face of a pig. Says that woman is a glutton. She feeds her face all the time. 
and says, when I see her, I see a pig's face. That'll take you somewhere and bring you back too. You see? Now this is the area that we are seeking to move into, to where we know not the skin, but we come to know what is inside of a person. Why should the devil spend billions of dollars every year playing with this thing and the church does nothing about it? In a city the size of this, there wouldn't be three churches that could even give you a definition of it or anything about it. They're so ignorant about it. They don't even want to discuss it or talk about it. Well, that's the devil putting up his gates of hell right. to keep you from understanding what God wants the church to know. If we had this gift functioning, you wouldn't have these great evangelists falling in sin. They would have been caught a long time before that through the discerning of spirits and said, if you don't stop watching pornographic films and looking at nudies, if you don't stop that, you're going to be in big trouble. Clean up or get out. But you see, all we saw was the nose, the eyes and the ears and the yakety yak. And we didn't know what was behind. That's because the gifts of the Spirit are not functioning. And if you'll permit me to say it, in a carnal church, in a carnal church that seeks, the word carnal means flesh, uh, and in a church is seeking just the, the body parts, you know. We got five senses in the body parts, and those five senses we seek to just baptize them with dirt and filth. And, and that's what the devil wants. He wants eyes of lust. He wants ears, tingling, tingling ears that you want to hear dirty, filthy little jokes with two or three meanings to them. He wants you to speak out things that are not clean and not pure, you, you see. He wants you to get away from this as far as you can. But these are the last days. Say last days. Last days. These are the days when the end of all things will be. And these are the days when we're going to have the in, in, Acts, in Acts 2, 17, it says, in the last days, saith God, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now, that's what we need. We need the outpouring of the glorious, mighty, wonderful spirit of God. And in the outflowing of the spirit of God, we'll be changed. And the church will be changed. And all the people said, uh, we are in the introduction here. He, he says that the spirit that motivates a person, whether it be good, a good spirit from God or an evil spirit that, that is from the devil. And that's, that's something that we must very significantly comprehend. And that is when we discern a spirit to know the source of it, whether it be of God or whether it is evil. And we're going to go into that very strong. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10 where the Holy Ghost speaking to the church says, and I will to de deliver unto you a supernatural gift called the discerning of human spirit, that you will know what humans are, not by their face, not by their words, but by their insides, by their lies. Now, there are three areas of operation and discernment, and, and uh, we, we, should all be, we should all be very conscious of that. And... Uh, The first, of course, is divine, that we, that we uh, come to know something supernaturally. We don't know it in our mind. We don't know it by relationships. It comes from God, that we suddenly see God uh, re revealed in the personality of a human being. And then the second is demonic. Uh, there is a vast, vast world Man is more curious about the supernatural than anything else. You go to a place like India, it is consumed with this thing. It is consumed with it. The people spend their money trying to know the future. Well, what good has it done? You know, they've been there a couple of thousand years, they're worse off now than they were 2,000 years ago. Uh -huh, uh, you know, their demons haven't helped them very much. The devil never helps anybody very much. He'll keep you in darkness as long as he possibly can. But our God is a God of light. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a God of light. And, and we, we must know, recognize all of this. There's the divine operation of a gift called, called, called the discerning of spirits. There's a de demonic action 
Always wrong. Always wrong. Uh, but, but a demonic action out there, uh, camouflaging and, and counterfeiting, you see, whatever God might be wanting and desiring to do, and deceiving the sinner, and sometimes the saint. Uh, deceiving the sinner in, in that he's telling him something that will only lead him to hell. It'll never bring him up into a good place. Then the third is the human area. Uh, we will be talking about that uh, in, in the human area also in this lesson. So these are the three areas that we will be addressing. The, the, discerning, the discerning of what's inside of a person divinely or the devil talking or your human nature speaking. And we will be working with all of these. <clears throat> what we have to get into first, I presume, is point number two. That we are not just going to talk about the discerning of devils. So many people fall into that, I hate to call it a rut because it's much worse than a rut. <clears throat> but they fall into this, this syndrome that they see devils everywhere. Now, if you're seeing devils everywhere, it only reveals one thing, that you're on the wrong track. This is not the discerning of devils. It, it, it is just simply not the discerning of devils. It's discerning of people. You know, people. What's on the inside of them? And we're going to very graphically show you <coughs> that which is inside of people uh, through, th through the moving of the Holy Spirit. Under point two, it says primarily... I must state emphatically that this gift simply is not just the discerning of devils. Get that out of our minds and get rid of it. It is not a clash of human personalities. Now, now there you would be <coughs> moving into that human element, a clash of human personalities. Uh, because you don't like somebody, oh, you've got a devil in you. And that is not necessarily true at all. Uh, we're not dealing with a clash of, of, of minds and a clash of emotions. We're, we're dealing with something far superior to this. And if you start working in that area, you'll never get into the fullness of the gift. That presents a barrier that keeps you from ever getting what God wants. If you're going to go around and say, oh, I see a devil here, I see a devil there, and the devil laughs, laughs at you for being stupid, and, and, and God can't do anything because you've already put a barrier you put in a whole, an unholy thing that God cannot identify himself with. You have to move through these things in holiness and purity and sincerity and spiritually. And all the people said, and so we are not talking about two people that just don't get along. And you've got a devil in you, I can see that. No, 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 they, you just don't like them and that's your problem then. It is not when a husband becomes angry with his wife and says, you got a devil. What he really means is you've mistreated me or I've mistreated you and then he called you a bad name. It does not mean you're possessed of the devil. When a woman gets angry with her husband because he's done something she don't like and she says, you are, you're, you are a devil. You're full of the devil, you know. That isn't necessarily true. It's just full of something you don't like. You should have found that out before you married him. That would have been a much better time to have found it out than after you've got covenanted Say covenant. This country breaks its covenants. Anybody that will break the marriage covenant will break other kind of covenants too, you know. This is a world where we break covenants as if they don't mean anything. Excepting, excepting we got a land full of sickness. Isn't that amazing? If every, if every man in this country was a doctor, if every woman in this country was a nurse, if every home was a hospital, you'd still be sick. You say, why? You're out of relationship with the Almighty God who is the source of health. He is the source of health. And you're out of relationship with that one. And because you're out of relationship with health, the devil gives you sickness. Now, now, now medicine is not the answer to this world and every doctor will tell you that, but you are the answer to it. You're the answer to it. Get something going in there of clean, pure, holy, and, and, and stop playing games, you know. Stop calling people names when they're not true. Just because you're upset and angry, then you come back and say, well, forgive me, I guess it's an angel in you. You need a spank where a spanking's good for people. And, and it says, the husband comes angry with his wife and says she has the devil. It is by no means the gift of suspicion. I, I, just, I, just, I just think that maybe, maybe they got something wrong inside of them. That's because they didn't shake your hand, honey. If they'd have shook your hand, you'd have thought they were sweet and lovely. 
I'm wanting to remove this from the human element and make it sky high, sky high in the element, in the element of divine function and operation because it has worked. It does work, but it cannot work, number one, in ignorance. You, you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, now, brethren, concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you to be ignorant. And that's the thing we have to work on is that verse 1. Just continue to work on it, that we, uh, that we learn something, that we know something. My, my guess is that there'd be nobody here, maybe two, in the whole, that have ever bought my, 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 my teaching syllabus, and along with that, to have bought the videotapes, and along with that, the audio tapes. And then we have a book on the subject, about that thick, the largest book in the world on that subject. And I just doubt that there's even two of us here that have ever concerned themselves enough about the gifts of the Spirit to buy the whole thing and say, I'm going to learn something. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to learn something. If all you ever get is what you hear in a lecture class, you will never fully comprehend because you have to go deeper than that. It's deeper than a lecture class. It's a heart thing, spirit thing down inside of us that rises up within us that says, I want to know God. I want to know his gifts. And if we, if we'll do that, I, I heard of, 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 of someone this week that said that there was a certain man that was in a church and received the Holy Spirit and they, uh, they, they put him out of the church. And because of that, he's against the gifts of the Spirit. He said, well, don't, don't get that. You get, you get put out of churches if you get that. He couldn't see the difference between being put out of a worldly church full of the world and, and, and being displaced there. How many have been put out of some kind of church? Let's see your hand. All oh, the rest of you don't know what fun that is. <laughs> yeah. Like the, like the little, little boy and, and uh, he was sitting by the side of a curb crying. He said, uh, I want to be a member of this church and they wouldn't receive me. He says, well, that's all right, son. Jesus has been trying to get a membership in there for 50 years and he hadn't made it yet either. <laughs> and, and so if you're going to you move on a humanistic level, you're not going to get this thing. And if you are not willing to pay the price, I say, I'm a fanatic. If I see something's of God, I'm willing to lose every person in the world to get what God has. Amen. See, I'll pay that price. I paid it. And being what I am today, I was removed from an organization for doing nothing but seeking God, seeking the gifts of the Spirit, removed from it oh, completely, you see. And I've lost a lot of friends. We had a thing happen in this city a few years ago where a church downtown. The minister fell into sin and almost the whole church moved out to our, to our church over here. It was called Calvary Temple and was down at Ewing and Michigan Street. Almost the whole church. And they all wanted to join at one time because their group was bigger than my group. The next Sunday they could have voted me out. You see? And I said, no, uh, uh, I'll take you in after you receive the Holy Ghost. I want to hear you speak in tongues first. They said, no, we don't believe in that. I said, you better find yourself another church. And they do. They have a church downtown there. Uh, if you've been around here a long time, it helps to know the history of things. But I, I lost that whole group more than you got in this, in this section here, you see, at one time. You say, well, why would you want to lose them? If they don't want the whole full gospel, why should I be bothered with them? I'm not out to be a man pleaser. I'm not out to get a big crowd. I'm out to get people through to truth. Truth. Say truth. truth. The most important thing in the world is truth. And we are seeking to guide people. And when they get into eternity, they can still say, thank God I knew the truth. It's important to know the truth. And, and so we will not compromise. We will not compromise on that. So we are not talking about a gift of suspicion. I sup uh, suspicion you and you and you, you know, you know. We're not dealing in that area of your mind at all. Our, <clears throat> uh, says uh, to, to try to see what the spirit is in the people that you meet. It certainly is not a study of, of psychoanalysis. We will deal with that a little bit because there again, billions of dollars are spilled on psychoanalysis, you know. Thinking that through your mind, you're going to understand what's in another person's mind, going to find out the secrets that's in there and, 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 and so forth. 
They wanted to get into a supernatural level without Calvary. Did you hear me? They wanted to get into a supernatural level, but they don't want, they don't want to get forgiveness of their sins. Yes, the devil does want to, to try to move into the supernatural. He's tried it all through history. Every empire was loaded with it. And we're not interested in that. And all the people said, so we, we are not seeking uh, a psychoanalysis of, of, of looking inside of you through a human instrument. And it is not the projection of ESP, which is extrasensory perception, uh, which is a function of the human mind and the human brain, and no further than that. Psychologists do not believe that you're three. They believe that you're two. You're inside, outside, top side, bottom side, and you are breath and flesh, and that's all there is to you. They do not believe in that third dimension, that you are a spirit. And you've got to get to know what you are inside of you, that you are a spirit. And that spirit has a soul. And that soul is mind, emotions, and will. And that is what you call heart. What is heart? Heart is not that little pump here about the size of a baseball for sure. Your heart is your total mental faculties, your total feeling faculties, and your total decision faculties. Your heart is what you inherited from Adam. It fell, it fell from grace in the Garden of Eden, and it has not been reconciled to God. The Bible says it is evil. It is evil above all things, the Bible says. And if you're going to follow your Adamic nature, and that's what these things call ESP, extrasensory perception and psychoanalysis, they all deal with what we call the human heart. Or you can call it the human soul. But they're not dealing with the God-man. And that's what makes the difference in our world that we live in today. Whether you're going to deal with the natural fallen man, or you're going to deal with the, with the upright, godly, holy man. And we want to move in the highest dimension. How many want to go to the high dimension? He says, which is a function of the human mind? The mind is a part of the soul, and, and it all functions uh, without the spirit. And what we're going to talk about to you in the discerning of spirits has totally to do with your spirit. Your number three says, an insight into the inner man of a human. This, this divine gift is the ability to see the the presence of activity of your spirit inside of you, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Oh, if the church only had this gift today to clean out the pews, to clean out the pulpits, that we'd all be walking in pure holiness before the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. In pure holiness. On every continent that I go to, there's Florida, a man built a multi-million dollar building and fell in the adultery. And that thing is a scarecrow down there today. It's a scarecrow down there today. And then, and then you go to Australia, the most beautiful church, North New Zealand, in Auckland, New Zealand. And the most beautiful church you've ever seen in your life, it's on a hillside overlooking the ocean. It's a garden of paradise. The man fell into sin and the thing almost went bankrupt. And then another man who's a friend of mine, and I preach there every time, they're one of the good givers for Feed the Hungry, stepped in there and, and, and got a loan of about $4 million and saved that building worth maybe $10 million. And, and, and all because of messing around with a woman. Aren't men crazy? Three women said amen, the rest of you scared to say anything. This divine gift is ability to see the presence or activity of, of a spirit, whether good or bad. This, this revelation comes to the church through the Holy Ghost. This discerning of spirits gives the members of the body of Christ an insight into the spirit world, where there are five senses of feeling and hearing and seeing and smelling and tasting. They cannot enter there. They have no relationship there. We're not talking about them there. We're up and above that. That, that, that telescope 
that the telescope can reveal the movements of the stars in space, the microscope can bring into light the intricate mysteries of the microscopic life. And in the realm of human affairs, the gifts of the discerning of spirits can penetrate to the soul and spirit of a human person, of a human person. I, I think we better let you start praying over that amount of it and, 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 and possibly uh, move into it stronger in our next lesson. It, it is so necessary. It is so necessary for us to understand these things. The gifts of the Spirit will be the last function of God on the face of this earth. And we want to be in that function of God, that great revival. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand, everybody.